Sue, Fossil. Summary. Susan Hendrickson discovered Sue, which is a T-Rex fossil that's named after Susan. It was then researched on and such and officially announced as the most complete fossil of a T-Rex by far. In 1997, an auction ended and Sue was bid at 8.3 million, moving her into Field Museum. In 2018, Sue was moved to a new suite, Griffin Halls of Evolving Planet. Scientific researches and studies have shown information about Sue. This fossil helped scientists in studies, enhancing their understanding of the structure of the bones of a T-Rex. Introduction Sue, nickname for one of the most complete, best preserved skeletons. Tyrannosaurus rex, T-Rex. Dated approximately 67 million years ago. Specimen was found on August 12, 1990 on South Dakota's Cheyenne River Sioux Reservation. 12.8 meters long, largest known skeletons of T-Rex. Discovered by American marine archaeologist and paleontologist Susan Hendrickson. Scientist for whom the specimen is named. Sex is unknown. Discovery. 1990. Workers from the Black Hills Institute, located in Hill City, searched for fossils at Cheyenne River Indian Reservation in western South Dakota near the City of Faith. Discovered at Montesaurus Bones and was ready to leave. Flat tire was then discovered on their truck. Reported and repaired the truck, Sue Hendrickson decided to explore the nearby cliffs that has not been checked. Discovered small pieces of bone. Observed larger bones from the wall of the cliff. Returned to camp with two small pieces of bones and reported the discovery to Peter Larson, president of B. Closer examinations of the site then showed many visible bones. Hendrickson and her crew was excited to uncover the bones. Scientists determined that water and mud were covering the bones to prevent animals from carrying it away. Field Museum Public auction ended in 1997 after a five-year custody battle. Field Museum with support from MCD's corporation, the Walt Disney World Resort and private donors, at the price of $8.4 million, most money paid ever for a fossil at auction. Sue made a debut in Stanley Field Hall on May 17, 2000. Twelve museum preparators spent more than 30k hours preparing the skeleton. 20k hours building the exhibit. Why is Sue important? Sue is largest Tyrannosaurus rex specimen discovered. Complete skeleton is stored unassembled in their research collections for further studies. Others were assembled into mounted cast skeletons to museums and science centers around the world. Sue is arguably the most famous fossil in the world. Enabled scientists to have more detailed studies of the species. Evolutionary Relationships Biology Growth Behavior Updates on Sue February 5, 2018 Disassembling and removing Sue from Stanley Field Hall Sue is moving to a dedicated suite in Griffin Halls of Evolving Planet Time out of the public eye During the time, scientists make important scientific updates Add Sue's gastralia to the rest of the skeleton Emerge the research since Sue was mounted. Lower the arms and install Sue's wishbone. Topic. What strategies helped uncover them, and how did they enhance our understanding of history? What circumstances allowed for these discoveries to be preserved well enough for us to find them so many years later? Sue was covered in mud and water causing the bone to be preserved and not carried away by animals. Many museums helped to piece back the fossil, and turns out to be the most complete Trex fossil by far. This helps scientists to enhance their understanding for the bone slash structure of a Trex, and such. Borobudur Summary Borobudur is a Buddhist temple located on the island of Java in Indonesia. It's the world's biggest Buddhist monument and one of the world's seven wonders. It reflects India's influence on the region and still maintains elements to make it uniquely Indonesian. 
It's built in three tiers, each having special elements, including 72 open work stupas with a Buddha in each. It was destroyed. The answer of why still remains quite unknown but a main suspect is that a king during the volcanic eruption moved the capital and influenced the abandonment. It was then discovered and planned to restore it during the 1970s by the Indonesia government and the help of UNESCO. They rebuilt every single stone, and the techniques they discovered on preservation are now set as the standards for preservation, including the way of rebuilding headless Buddhas. As for now, it is now protected under the laws of Indonesia. Info about Borobudur Located on the island of Java, Indonesia Borobudur Temple is the world's biggest Buddhist monument. One of the world's seven wonders. Design was reflects India's influence on the region. Still has elements to make it uniquely Indonesian. Built in three tiers. Pyramidal base with five concentric square terraces. 72 open work stupas, each having statue of the Buddha. Monument was restored with UNESCO's help. Structure, blending of central ideas and ancestor worship. Believe that universe is divided into three spheres Kamatatu, Rupatatu, and Arupatatu. Representing the sphere of desires where we are bound to our desires. Kamatatu represented by the base. Rupatatu by the five square terraces. Arupatatu by the three circular platforms. Why was it built? Worship, contemplation, and meditation. Features life, stories, and teachings of Buddha. It is the most visited site within Indonesia. Abandonment. Borobudur was hidden under layers of volcanic ash and jungle growth. It remains a mystery why it's abandoned. Not known when active use of the monument. Suspect. King Pusindok moved the capital after volcano eruptions and this may be the influencer of the abandonment. Several sources mention this as the most likely answer. Written, this temple may be disbanded when the population converted to Islam in the 15th century. Was not forgotten completely. Folk stories gradually shifted from its past glory into its beliefs into associating with bad luck and misery. According to Babat Tana J.Y., History of Java, the monument was a fatal factor for Mas Dana, a rebel who revolted against Pakubi 10i, the king of Mataram. It was a taboo visiting the monument. Protection Protected under Indonesian law no November 2010. Concerning cultural heritage and its surrounding cultural landscape. Executed under a national strategic area and the spatial management plan by the MO Public Works in accordance with the law concerning spatial management No. 26-2007. Governmental Regulation No. 26-2008 concerning national spatial planning. Will be enforced further by another presidential regulation. Regarding that the management is still being drafted. How is it restored? 1970. UNESCO, money, resources, and pros from 27 countries did it together. Plan, dismantle and rebuild the give square terraces from the base up. Clean each stones, reinforce the foundation. Installing an efficient drainage system behind the walls and under the floors of the galleries. Top level still remain the same slash slash other than that, other parts will be taken down, stone by stone. Work only started until 1975. Became a testing ground for new conservation techniques and new procedures to get rid of the microorganisms eating away the stones after the monument was taken down piece by piece. Art techniques, experts in engineering, chemistry, biology, and archaeology. Monument was closed for 10 years to the public. Restoration costs $25 million. Took 8 years of labor. International cooperation. Work was led by Soekmono. Brought out the spirit of Borobudur and international cooperation as he worked. Modern restoration techniques learned at Borobudur set the standards of preservation for future efforts. The work of archaeologists and local stone carver continues today. Using traditional Javanese methods to repair, 
including headless Buddhas. Sutton Hu Summary The Sutton Hu ship burial in Suffolk, England is considered one of the greatest archaeological finds of all time. It contains a 27-meter-long ship containing the remains of an Anglo-Saxon warrior, artifacts such as helmet, sword, shield, and a lyre, and is now owned by the National Trust and is open to the public. Archaeologist Basil Brown's discovery in 1939 revealed the richest intact early medieval grave in Europe. Netflix is the dig SSSSSS Anglo-Saxon archaeology with a new level of subtlety and accuracy, focusing on key themes in the archaeological study of the past. Information Archaeological site located in Suffolk, England. Considered one of the greatest archaeological finds of all time. Site of two early medieval cemeteries. 6th and 7th century. Famous burial discovered, a 27-meter long ship. Containing the remains of an Anglo-Saxon warrior. Artifacts, helmet, sword, shield, and a lyre. Scholars believe Reedwald, king of the East Angles, is probably buried. Significant archaeological finds in British history. Provides insight into the life and culture of the Anglo-Saxon people. Site is now owned by the National Trust and is open to the public. Who means spur of land in Old English? Dig that ensued turned up a host of valuable objects. Artifacts rank among the most important ones ever found in England. Now in the British Museum in London. The Discovery Archaeologist Basil Brown was the one that made the discovery in 1939. He brushed away Suffolk soil and revealed the richest intact early medieval grave in Europe. Spectacular funerary monument on an epic scale, which is the longship. Basil and his team dug deeper, feasting vessels, deluxe hanging bowls, silverware from distant Byzantium, luxurious textiles, gold dress accessories set. Sri Lankan garnets and the iconic helmet with human mask. Archaeologists and landowner Edith Pretty were dumbfounded. Someone was buried here, and it's someone meant to be remembered. A king's grave. During the Anglo-Saxon period, before England existed. Sue Brunning says that the effort and manpower were necessary to position and bury the ship. Involved dragging the ship upfill from the River Devon, etc. Ship burials were rare. Only reserved for important people in society. Likely to be a huge funeral ceremony. Brunning's study of the Sutton Who Sword has led to believing that the owner was left-handed, with patterns of wear indicating it was worn on the right and carried in the left. The iconic helmet. Wrapped in cloth and laid near the left side of the dead person's head. Functional and beautiful, vaulted cap and deep cheek pieces. Covered in complicated imagery. Fighting, dancing warriors, fierce creatures. Forms a dragon whose wings make the eyebrows and tail and the mustache. Garnets line the eyebrows. One is backed with gold foil reflectors. Maybe a reference to the one-eyed god, Woden. Importance. Rich source of archaeological evidence for the Anglo-Saxon period of England's history. Discovery changed our understanding of that era. Didn't end in 1939 because knowledge and understanding about it is still changing and expanding. 1,400 years ago, a community came together to haul a ship from the river. With the buried king along with treasured possessions for his final journey. The dig. Edith Pretty was convinced there were important archaeological secrets. It was uncovered and she was proven right. Sutton Hoo ship burial was a source of pride and inspiration, equivalent to the tomb of Tutankhamun. Netflix is The Dig, based on the novel of the same name by John Preston. Transformed understanding of the Dark Age. Before this discovery, a dearth of written sources was presumed to signal an absence of culture in this period. Films usually tends to focus on treasure hunters or forensic detectives. This film approaches archaeology with a new level of subtlety and accuracy, focusing on key themes in the archaeological study of the past. 
values. Anglo-Saxon archaeology explores many different social roles and lifestyles. Archaeologists themselves are also a more diverse and inclusive lot, committed to working with local communities to discover their past, giving careful reflection to ethical issues. Reminds us that the role of archaeology is not in treasure-seeking but reflecting on the complex relationship to the past. How and why we value it? Topic. What strategies helped uncover them, and how did they enhance our understanding of history? What circumstances allowed for these discoveries to be preserved well enough for us to find them so many years later? There wasn't a specific strategy to uncover it. But this enhanced our understanding of the Anglo-Saxon period of England's history. It's preserved well enough for us to find them because it's moved by the people after effort and hard work by the people back then. Archaeology, Old Temple, Fastest Human In 2022, researchers unearthed an ancient Buddhist temple in Pakistan. It doesn't really have a name. It's called Swat since it is located in the Swat Valley, Pakistan. Buddhist temple unearthed in Pakistan. Archaeologists in northwest Pakistan's Swat Valley have unearthed a temple that could be one of the oldest in the country. Roughly 2,000 year old Buddhist temple. Could be the oldest temple in Pakistan. Located along an ancient road leading to the ancient city's main Buddhist monument. The temple complex. Which was built and reconstructed several times. Included a smaller stupa, a cylindrical structure that housed a conical or dome-shaped Buddhist monument. A cell or room for monks, a staircase, the podium of a monumental pillar or column, vestibule rooms, and a public courtyard that looked out onto an ancient road. Dates The temple dates from about the middle of the 2nd century BCE. It was built atop an earlier Buddhist temple dated to as early as the 3rd century BCE. People would have built the older temple, the earlier Buddhist temple, within a few hundred years of the death of the founder of Buddhism, Siddhartha Gautama. Siddhartha Gautama who lived in what is now northern India and Nepal between about 563 BCE and 483 BCE. Process Italian archaeologists, who have been working in Swat since 1955, began the excavations at Barakat in 1984. In order to unearth the temple, they have to rent vacant land and excavate as much of it as possible protecting it against urban sprawl and other archaeologists who want to sell the artifacts to the foreign anti-quarry markets. But the temple was found on land acquired by the provincial archaeological authorities near the center of the city, which enabled the team to begin excavations there in 2019. Pits made by looters had already suggested something important might be buried there. In late 2021, the ancient Buddhist temple was unearthed in Barakat in Swat region. This mission of investigating the temple is currently led by Professor Luca Maria Olivieri. Since 2021, C.A. Foscari, a university, began a collaboration with ISMIO, the International Association for Mediterranean and Oriental Studies. Funded by the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation and the Directorate of Archaeology and Museums KP Province, DOAMKP, and the SWAT Museum. Discovery They discovered an ancient temple which is able to project the culture, Buddhist, that PPL in that time looked up to. The team also unearthed coins, jewelry, statues, seals, pottery fragments and other ancient artifacts. For the statement, the temple was likely abandoned in the 3rd century CE following an earthquake. Fastest Human 20.000 years old footprint found in New South Wales, Australia. It is said that this footprint belongs to the fastest man in history. It was left by an aboriginal hunter. BG a footprint. About 20,000 years ago, Five human hunters passed on the edge of a wetland in New South Wales, Australia. Others also wandered across the muddy landscape, including a family of five, a small child, and a one-legged man who hopped without a crutch. 
the footprints and stride lengths showed these info. This wetland is now dried out and belongs to the Mungo National Park. It was spotted between sand dunes by Mary Papin Jr., a young Aboriginal girl. It has been studied since 2003 when found. Scientists have since found 700 fossil footprints, 400 of them grouped in a set of 23 tracks. These are the tracks belong to the group listed above. One man from this last group may still hold the world record for fastest runner, 20,000 years after he left his footprint. Calculates that one hunter was running at 37 kilometers an hour. Same speed as Usain Bolt, but the hunter was running on mud and Usain Bolt ran on the 100 meters track for 9.58 seconds. But this measure only comes from one print, and may be misleading. A sprinter will sometimes go much faster than the world record during a few instants. Even if it's wrong, the study of the prints he left with his comrades proves that he was at least an elite athlete. Ground penetrating radar suggests thousands more prints may lie below the ground in at least eight layers of ancient mud stacked. For now, the excavated tracks sit under protective layers of cloth and dirt to shelter them from erosion. They also hope to build a keeping place, or sacred shelter, to safeguard the footprints of their ancestral families. Aboriginal PPL These PPL are the various indigenous peoples of the Australian mainland and so on. The ancestors of present-day Aboriginal Australian people migrated from Southeast Asia by sea. Most Aboriginal people speak English with Aboriginal phrases and words being added to create Australian Aboriginal English. Some Aboriginal people are multilingual. Traditional cultural beliefs are passed down and shared by dancing, stories, song lines, and art. Collectively telling the story of creation known as the dream time. The dream time. The dreaming is used to represent aboriginal concepts of during which the land was inhabited by ancestral figures often of heroic proportions or with supernatural abilities these figures were often distinct from gods as they did not control the material world and were not worshipped but respected and admired discovery investigating this will present the life of those ppl that books can't show the footprints reveal things that archaeological sites or skeletal remains couldn't. It showed how the Aboriginal people were acting slash doing at the scene. The footprints and stride lengths show how the child walked, paused, turned, and ran away from the group they were with, before walking briskly back towards them. Lucy Fossil Oldest fossil skeleton of a human ancestor Lucy acquired her name from the 1967 song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by the Beatles was played loudly and repeatedly in the expedition camp all evening after the excavation team's first day of work on the recovery site. The fossil is slightly less than 3.18 million years old. It is most likely she died because she fell from a tall tree. Lucy, Australopithecus a collection of several hundred pieces of fossil least bone representing 40% of a female. Archaeologists combine the pieces and estimate its whole skeleton. Lucy was an human-like ape, ape developing into humans but not fully human. She was named Lucy because there was much celebration and excitement over the discovery of what looked like a fairly complete hominid skeleton. They were partying and the Beatles song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was playing over and over. At some point, the skeleton was given the name Lucy. No one remembers when or by whom. She is estimated to live in East Africa since she was discovered in Hadur, Ethiopia. Lucy is said to be a human ancestor. She stood up straight, with feet, knees and hips that are similar to ours. If you saw her walking from afar, you would think Lucy was human by her silhouette. But. She is not a fully developed human, still have characteristic of chimpanzees slash apes. She had a small head, a brain comparable in size to a chimpanzee's, longer arms and hair covering her body. Her life. She walked on two feet. Lucy lived at an important time where apes were developing to humans. 
Lucy walked on two feet, a major step in human evolution. But, there are still differences between modern humans and apes. So it's said that she still haven't abandoned trees. She spends time on trees too. After a CT scan, she has heavily built up her limbs, supporting the image of a regular climber who pulled herself up with her arms. She may have nested in trees at night to avoid predators. Sleeping for eight hours a day would thus mean she spent at least a third of her time off the ground, explaining the need for her odd mix of adaptations. Discovery Lucy was found by Donald Johansson and Tom Gray. They are archaeologists. Found on November 24, 1974. Found at Hadar, Ethiopia. On a hot day, Johansson decided to look at the bottom of a small gully that had been checked at least twice before by other workers. He spotted a right forearm bone and quickly identified it as a hominid, ape. Shortly, he saw a skull bone, then a femur, some ribs, a pelvis, and the lower jaw. Two weeks later, after many hours of excavation, screening, and sorting, several hundred fragments of bone had been recovered, representing 40% of a single hominid skeleton. Her height is the same as a modern five-year-old. She was a fully grown young adult when she died, yet stood just 1.1 meters. Weight about 29 kilograms, 64 pounds. For her body size, her brain is actually larger than what's normal for a modern, non-human ape of her body size. This doesn't necessarily mean her intelligence could rival ours, but it is a reminder that she wasn't just an upright chimpanzee. She has a small brain. When Lucy's brain size is considered in proportion to the rest of her body, it doesn't seem as tiny. Her skull only had space for a brain about the size of a chimpanzee. For example, Lucy walked on two feet. We know this from several clues in her bones, such as the angle of her femur in relation to knee joint surfaces and adaptation that helps bipedal animals balance while walking. Her knee joints also show signs of carrying her full body weight. How do we know that her skeleton is from a single individual? Although several hundred fragments of hominid bone were found at the Lucy site, there was no duplication of bones. A single duplication of even the most modest of bone fragments would have disproved the single skeleton claim, but no such duplication is seen in Lucy. Cause of death No cause has been determined for Lucy's death. She was a young, but fully mature, adult when she died. Her third wisdom teeth are erupted and slightly worn, indicating that she was fully adult. She might have died by falling out a tree. Her skeleton doesn't show signs of gnawing by carnivores or scavengers, so she was unlikely to be killed by predator. If so, the ends of long bones are often missing, and their shafts are sometimes broken. Exhibitions The Lucy skeleton is preserved at the National Museum of Ethiopia in Addis Ababa. A plaster replica is publicly displayed there instead of the original skeleton. A cast of the original skeleton in its reconstructed form is displayed at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. What did we learn? We learned that our ancestors slowly changed from ape to human. We can also discover new things from long ago. We know that this thing exists on this earth before slash or solve misconceptions. Dead Sea Scrolls What are those? The Dead Sea Scrolls are ancient Jewish and Hebrew religious manuscripts discovered between 1946 and 1956. This fundamental text has left its imprint on Christianity and Islam. Dead Sea Scrolls are almost the same as the Bible. The Dead Sea Scrolls are considered to be a keystone in archaeology. With great historical, religious, and linguistic significance because they include the oldest surviving manuscripts of entire books. They are approximately 2,000 years old, dating from the 3rd century BCE to the 1st century CE. Most of the scrolls were written in Hebrew, with a smaller number in Aramaic or Greek. The vast majority of the scrolls survived as fragments. 
Scholars have managed to reconstruct from these fragments approximately 950 different manuscripts of various lengths. Nobody knows for sure who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls. Discovery In late 1946 or early 1947, teenage shepherds accidentally stumbled upon the first set of Dead Sea Scrolls. Located on the northwest shore of the Dead Sea now known as the West Bank, one of the young shepherds tossed a rock into an opening on the side of a cliff and was surprised to hear a shattering sound. He and his companions later entered the cave and found a collection of large clay jars, seven of which contained leather and papyrus scrolls. Sold it to an antiquities dealer. Ended up in the hands of scholars who estimated that the texts were upwards of 2,000 years old. After word of the discovery got out, Bedouin treasure hunters and archaeologists started unearthing these scrolls. Tens of thousands of additional scroll fragments from ten nearby caves unearthed. Make up between 800 and 900 manuscripts together. They searched caves nearby and there were 12 caves that have the scrolls. At the 12th cave, there was one blank parchment found in a jar, but broken and empty scroll jars and pickaxes suggest that the cave was looted in the 1950s. It was said that the piece of parchment was being processed for writing, the findings indicate that the cave contained scrolls that were stolen. Cave 1 was rediscovered on January 28, 1949. Info What did they find on the scrolls? One of the most intriguing manuscripts is the Copper Scroll. An ancient treasure map that lists dozens of gold and silver caches. It features Hebrew and Greek letters chiseled onto metal sheets, unlike other manuscript. The Copper Scroll describes 64 underground hiding places that purportedly contain riches stashed for safekeeping. None of these hoards have been recovered. The Type of Scrolls Manuscripts were found primarily in two separate formats. Scrolls Fragments of previous scrolls and texts the types of manuscript biblical comprise the hebrew bible representing the earliest evidence for the biblical text in the world apocryphal tales works that had previously been known only in translation or that had not been known at all unpopular tales sectarian culture conflict biblical commentary religious legal writings Liturgical texts, worship ritual, apocalyptic compositions, believes the scrolls belongs to the sect, group that has political slash culture conflict, that lived in Qumran. But, it appears that the members of the sect wrote only part of the scrolls themselves. The rest of the manuscripts are copied elsewhere. What is the purpose of the scrolls? Convincing methods of proof of Jesus' existence, both historically and theologically. Because they date back so closely to the time of Christ, they are all the more solidified as honest records of the Hebrew Bible. Why are the scrolls in fragments? In the fourth cave the fragments were torn into up to 15,000 pieces. It is caused by natural causes or through human interference. How did they figure out when? Parchment from a number of the Dead Sea Scrolls has been carbon dated. These dates were determined by examining the size, variability, and style of the text. They also assumed dates based on the ink or materials of paper. How did it enhance our understanding of history? It creates evidence of the beliefs of PPL in the past. Strengthen the guess about history. Preservation The scrolls that were found were originally preserved by the dry, arid, and low humidity conditions. Some of the scrolls were found stored in clay jars within the Qumran caves, helping to preserve them from deterioration. The original handling of the scrolls by archaeologists was done inappropriately, the scrolls began a process of more rapid deterioration than they had experienced at Qumran. The government knew it is bad but did not have funds to purchase all the scrolls for their protection. Agreed to have foreign institutions have them held at their museum in Jerusalem until they could be adequately studied. Till 1970, the scrolls kept deteriorating cause they kept them in a moist condition. 
In 1991, the Israeli Antiquities Authority established a temperature-controlled laboratory for the storage and preservation of the scrolls. The only biblical scroll that has been preserved entirely is Isaiah scroll. It is 734 centimeters long. One of the oldest to have been preserved. Estimate that it was written around 100 BC. Additional info. Small portions of the Dead Sea Scrolls collections have been put on temporary display in exhibitions at museums and public venues. The majority of these exhibitions took place in 1965 in the United States and the United Kingdom. The majority of the Dead Sea Scrolls collection was moved to Jerusalem's Shrine of the Book, a part of the Israel Museum, in April 1965. Some of the missing scrolls are in hands of PPL who bought it of the black market or stole it in the 1900s. Richard III Summary Richard LLL, October 2, 1452 to August 22, 1485, was the King of England and was also the last English king to die in battle. He died in war in 1485 but his body was not found until 2012. His body was found under a car park in the English city of Leicester. Richard III visited Leicester often, both as a boy and as Duke of Gloucester. Found out that Richard III has scoliosis. Scoliosis is a condition where the spine twists and curves to the side. It is believed to involve a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Since he died in war, he had multiple injuries to the skull. Richard LLL October 2, 1452 to August 22, 1485. King of England from June 26, 1483. On November 1, 1461, became Duke of Gloucester. Last King of the House of York, English. Defeated and died at the Battle of Bosworth Field, Wars of the Roses. The End of the Middle Ages in England. Richard III greatest rival was related to him. Henry Tudor, the one who defeated Richard. His reign was the shortest since the Battle of Hastings. Richard's reign of two years and two months was the shortest of all the crowned. Cause of death slash reburial. Cause of death. Died by a blow on the head. The injuries showed no protection of the head so it would appear that Richard III lost his helmet, or had it forcibly removed during the battle. Why? Richard III was surrounded by enemies who cut him down. Richard's corpse was taken to the nearby town of Leicester and buried without ceremony. His tomb is said to have been destroyed during the reign of Henry VIII. His remains were wrongly thought to have been thrown into the river Soar. Reburial his remains were carried in procession to the cathedral on March 22, 2015. Reburied on March 26, 2015 at a religious reburial service, Leicester. His tombstone is deeply incised with a cross, and consists of a rectangular block of white fossil stone. Info found on his skeleton. He had scoliosis. A condition where his spine is curved reduced his height to below 5 feet. Info from Richard's skeletons. Richard III got hit to the head from numbers of different blade weapons, suggesting he was ferociously attacked from all sides by a lot of PPL. He had around 10 injuries to his skeleton. Research said that Richard did not have his helmet but still had his armor. Injuries. Four minor injuries on the top of the skull. One dagger blow on the cheekbone. One cut on the lower jaw. Two fatal injuries on the base of the skull. One cut on a rib bone. One final wound on the pelvis. Richard's naked body was tied to the back of a horse. The angle of the blow on the pelvis, the wound, suggests that someone stabbed Richard's right buttock. The cut extended from the back all the way to the front of the pelvic bone. Act of humiliation. Under the parking lot. Finding Richard's skeletons. In 2012, University of Leicester wanted to find the remains of King Richard. Found the location by comparing fixed points between maps in a historical sequence. 
the location, the church where Richard's body had been hastily buried. Doug Robert Herrick's garden, where the memorial to Richard III stood in the early 17th century. A human skeleton was found beneath the church's choir, which is now a modern car park. The church is thought to have been destroyed during the reign of Henry VIII. On September 12, it was announced that the skeleton discovered during the search was Richard III. What is the point? If they hadn't found Richard's skeleton, we wouldn't have known he got scoliosis. So, it shows that we will learn new information from evidence that is connected to the past. It will show things that are not written in papers or information that the historians don't even know. Remote Sensing Summary Remote sensing is a technology that enables remote sensing to collect data from dangerous or inaccessible areas, locate and analyze objects with remote sensing hardware slash computer software, and measure the time delay between emission and return in order to establish the location, direction, and speed of an object. It also provides fast and repetitive large areas for everyday applications, weather forecasts, collects and performs data processing and GIs analysis, monitoring floods and forest fires, deforestation, polar bears, chemical concentrations, and earthquakes, and limits. Additionally, remote sensing can be used to detect fossils, locate possible locations, detect electromagnetic radiation, and use images to identify different types of land cover as it differs the type of rocks detected. Introduction Definition Process of detecting and monitoring the physical characteristics of an area. Type of geospatial technology that samples emitted and reflected M radiation from the Earth. Measuring its reflected and emitted radiation at a distance. From a satellite or aircraft. Special cameras collect remotely sensed images, help researchers sense things about the Earth. Cameras on satellites and airplanes take images of large areas on the Earth's surface allowing us to see much more than we can see when standing on the ground. Used to make images of temperature changes in the oceans. Sonar systems on ships, used to create images of the ocean floor. Without traveling to the bottom of the ocean. Specific uses. Large forest fires, mapped from space, allowing rangers to see a much larger area than from the ground. Tracking clouds. Help predict the weather, watch erupting volcanoes, watch for dust storms. Tracking the growth of a city and changes in farmland or forests over time. Discovery and mapping of the rugged topography of the ocean floor. Huge mountain, ranges, deep canyons, and the magnetic striping. Classes. Passive sensors. Respond to external stimuli gathers radiation that is reflected or emitted by an object or the surrounding. Common source of radiation is reflected sunlight. Charge coupled devices, film photography, radiometers, and infrared. Active sensors. Internal stimuli to collect data, emitting energy in order to scan objects and areas. A sensor measures the energy reflected from the target. Radar and LIDAR, Measure the time delay between emission and return in order to establish the location, direction, and speed of an object. Gets data and process and analyze with remote sensing hardware slash computer software. Importance of remote sensing. Allows to collect data from dangerous or inaccessible areas. Replaces slower, pricey data collection. Provides fast and repetitive large areas for everyday applications. Weather forecasts to reports on natural disasters or climate change. Unobstructive method. Collect and perform data processing and GIs analysis offsite. Monitoring floods and forest fires, deforestation, polar bears, chemical concentrations, and earthquakes. Limitations. Inaccuracy by the M spectrum radiation emitted from powerful active remote sensing systems. Intrusive and affect the target phenomenon being investigated. Introduce inaccurate, uncalibrated data. Discovering fossils with remote sensing. Because of limited time and money for field work, 
the solution is to use remote sensing to help uncover fossils, and new tech may be developing for it. Analyzes images from satellites and tags potential areas that could contain fossils. Locating possible locations which is rich in fossils. System is based upon images from NASA's series of Landsat missions. Satellites observe environments of the Earth since 1970. They cannot directly detect fossils but they can differ between types of rocks so they know where fossils might be. Detect wavelengths of M radiation that humans cannot detect. Allow scientists to use images to identify different types of land cover because rock layers are made up of minerals that reflect different wavelengths. Occur in both visible and infrared wavelengths, analysts can identify different types of land cover.